Okay, so this is how it works. Watch this. Hey, BMW. I'm bored. I can't imagine that. Maybe you didn't get a chance to try out sport mode. Right? Okay. Now you okay. Try. All right. Hey, BMW. Why is Arkansas spelt differently than it's pronounced? No, see, you, 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 there's a fundamental misunderstanding of this technology. Wait, oh, okay, show me again. Okay. Hey, BMW, I'm cold. Turn on the climate control beforehand. See? That sort of thing. Okay, okay, okay. I, I got this, I got Go this. Go on, try again. Hey, BMW, at what age is it no longer appropriate to pull your pants down at the urinal? No. That's, you drive me mad. That's not how it's done. Oh, okay. Let me show you again. Hey, BMW, what's the weather today? Today it will be rainy in Toronto with a low of 25 and a high of 37 degrees. Right, right. It's cool. Okay, yeah, okay. No, I got this. I can okay. do this. All right, I got this. Hey, BMW, can you make me a corned beef sandwich on rye? You are... I like this car. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And we're living with an M850i for a week. Yeah. Ultimate driving machine. Three words that have been uttered for the better part of five decades. And they came about so the owners could feel true pride in the automobile they had just bought. And while the slogan covered all of BMW's lineup, it's one that can't help but be inextricably linked with its flagship models. One of which is the 8 Series. And now, after a 20 year hiatus, it has returned in the M850i. Dressed today in sunset orange, this 4,500 pound monster has a 4.4 litre V8, putting out 523 horsepower. And this V8 is quite new. It's a hot V engine, meaning its enlarged turbos are situated inside the V. And that, coupled with powerful injectors and a carefully tweaked intake manifold, means that it makes 553 pound-feet of torque at 1800 RPM. So, we can assume that it's fast, but how is it to drive? And how is it to live with? Well, this week we put it through its paces to see what living with a $130,000 Canadian flagship BMW is actually like. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so that you see our videos as soon as they come out. Also, if you want to see what we're filming before it goes live on YouTube, follow us on Instagram at The Throttle House. Okay, we've been living with this car for a week now, and we've had our adventures with it. We've tried to get it clean at the car wash in vain. Some more. Stop, 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 stop. What size are the tires? Well, I guess it doesn't get clean. These are 275s in the back. That's not going to work. It won't fit. Unlivable. Two out of ten would not buy. <laughs> And there was even some confusion at a gas station. So where it tells you how many kilometers you have left, there's an arrow pointing on the left side. So I pulled up thinking it was on the left side. It turns out there's another one with an arrow pointing on the right next to your actual fuel amount. And that's on the other side of the car. So I looked like the biggest idiot at the gas station for a brief moment. And considering how much this car with its 4.4 litre V8 wants you to put your foot down all the time, we haven't done too badly for gas. We've done 13.3 litres per 100 kilometers which in miles per gallon is this. All right, so Thomas is gonna take this thing on the back roads. I'm gonna take it on the highway and talk to you about what it's like to cruise in. All right, we're on some back roads. The brand new BMW M850i. This has a new 4.4 liter twin turbo, two twin scroll turbo V8 engine that makes an absolute whale of a sound. And it just, it feels so bassy when you hit the throttle. Listen to this. Sport mode, foot down. <laughs> it just sounds, it sounds like James Earl Jones. Everything that like touches is your kingdom. If yeah, BMW claims that this can hit 60 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour in 3.6 seconds. And I'll be honest, from where I'm sitting, I have absolutely no reason to doubt them. 
So as I enter the highway right now, I realize I'm just like every other car, except I have 523 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque, which means when I put the foot to the floor, it does that. <laughs> King of the road is how you feel in these GT cars. Get out of the way! And that's the best thing about this car, is it makes you feel like you're better than everyone else. And if you don't know that by looking at the crystal shifter, you'll know it by the looks on people's faces as you drive past them. This thing gets a weird amount of attention. But this is a grand touring car. This is not just a straight sports car. So yes, while I can accelerate at blinding speed, it means I can also cruise on the highway and be super comfortable. And one of the things that makes it such a comfortable grand tour is stuff like the highway comforts, like BMW's assisted driving mode. So I'm gonna put it in that now. And so now it's taking the wheel and the adaptive cruise control. Hello, what can I help you with? There's also a feature in this car, as you saw in our intro, that talks to you. And sometimes you just want to say the word BMW without being interrupted by a vehicle. You know, vehicular interruptions have got to be up there with one of my biggest pet peeves. Could you repeat that, please? Okay, back row. What's it like to drive? Now, the power is immediate, obviously, but the response from the actual car on the back road is quite good, four-wheel steering, which means that I toss it into a corner like this, and the nose just kind of tucks in. It feels smaller than it is. It's actually a very impressive car for how insanely long and heavy it is. It's 4,500 pounds, this car. And it doesn't feel like that out here, honestly. The torque split in this, this is X-Drive, is mostly rear-wheel biased, as a lot of BMW X-Drive cars are. But it does have a proper kind of grand touring rear-wheel drive feel when you put the power down. All right, BMW's assisted driving mode. And I'm now not touching anything. And the car doesn't like it when you do this. So it will start, and it's doing it now, it'll start flashing orange on the steering wheel. And it doesn't make a sound. It's kind of like, yo, come on, put stuff on. But then it gets very upset and it will start to flash red and beep. And if you let it go all the way, it will actually break, which can be scary if you're trying to show a friend how cool it is. But I, I honestly I have to compliment it. There are other cars we've driven that, that don't notify you strongly enough that they're about to leave the assist behind. This does a very, very good job. Every single screen and monitor, including the heads up display, tells you to put your hands back on the wheel. And sometimes I find that once I've done that, and once I've gone through the red flashing bit, it won't let me put it on for another few minutes. I'm in, I'm in the penalty box. I'm getting told off by an 8 Series. I've never had a car get mad at me before. I don't like it, all right? The steering is probably my least favorite part in terms of the performance driving section of this car. In comfort mode, it's numb. In sport mode, it's heavy numb. It feels nice that, uh, to drive with, like it's easy and relaxing. But if when you're pushing it through a corner, I wanna feel the weight building. I wanna feel a little bit of feedback and I'm just not quite getting that with this. Like after getting out of the M240i that you might've seen that video already that we did, that feels like night and day in terms of like precision and engagement in the front end to this. This feels bigger and number, which I suppose it, it's probably supposed to. Around town, this thing's been an absolute breeze. I personally love the steering in this it doesn't in comfort mode it doesn't have the artificial weight that we felt in recent cars that we've driven i don't want to name any names <laughs> of s60 mazda 3. i don't i'm not a huge fan of the start stop i know start stop is is not liked by a lot of the enthusiast community hold on one sec i just need to do that oh sorry i just needed to maintain road superiority um so the start stop's a bit annoying like nothing has ever been as smooth as the start stop that we felt in that cls 53 you can turn it off, but it doesn't remember that you've turned it off. So every time you get in the car, you have to turn off that function again, which is it's starting to irritate me, but I, I guess you can get over it because every time you put your foot down, it does that. This is the ZF 8-speed, and BMW dominates this transmission. They know what they're doing. Third gear, down to second, lightning fast. Listen to these shifts. <laughs> This car makes a sound on the upshift. It's like a chunk chunk sound. It's almost like, like cocking a shotgun. That's what it sounds like when you upshift and it is super cool. And honestly, doing some like aggressive driving, I don't even need to use the paddles. It reads my foot input like a book. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. And it just is so intuitive. It just does exactly what I want. Foot down, downshift. Two gears like that and we're off. 
This is a very responsive vehicle. All in all, and I'll say this to Thomas when I see him to talk about their exterior designs, as a Grand Tourer, this delivers in spades. It's blindingly fast. We've got X drive, so it's all year round. And like as the week has progressed, I've got more and more comfortable with the seats. At first they felt a bit hard. I think I, either my body has molded to them or they've molded to my body. Either way, that's some pretty high tech technology. You know? But yes, while it's easy to jump on pet peeves and get annoyed at the assist system, which I'm pretty sure you could do with Siri, Alexa and Google Chrome if you wanted to. The key takeaway here is that this is an excellent highway car an excellent around town cruiser. It's been soaking up potholes in Toronto perfectly. And from the driver's seat, it makes you feel like you are driving a special car worthy of the price tag. And I can't overstate enough how much attention this thing gets on the road. What, whatever you think of the, the look of it, it's obviously unique enough that people cannot take their eyes off it. Okay, so honestly though, even though this car is really fun to drive and, and it makes a fantastic noise, in terms of, if you take away the image of the car completely, I would just take an M2 or an M240 because it is more fun to drive, it is just as practical. In fact, there's more space in the back seats of an M2 than there is in this. So it begs the question, why do you need this car? And the answer is very simple. <laughs> this is freaking cool. Oh, well, this thing rides like a dream. It does, It absolutely. earns that Grand Tour name so yes. well. In because of the, like the, the four wheel steering, it actually feels smaller than it is. Yeah, not as small as the M240 we were just in. No, it doesn't. But it still but feels it, amazing. It's still, it is, it is a, still a fun car to drive in the engine. Whoa, love it. I it's absolutely a, it's love a new it. engine, right? That 4.4 liter V8. It's so it's nice. A, it's a new, it's an evolution of that engine. Yes, no, it's a fantastic power plant and it makes such a good noise. Now, styling. Never have I said from certain angles yes. when I describe this to people more than I have with this car because from certain angles, it I looks think, fantastic. I think up to here, it looks great. Yeah, you don't and like the back end, This do you? gets weird and long. Yeah, yeah. It, from certain angles in the back, it looks cool. And but then like, this, this spoiler, this lip or deck lid or whatever they call it. It's kind of stuck on. It looks on. like it's taken from a smaller car and they've just gone, well, we'll put it more in. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. otherwise, I think it looks great. Front end, the, the laser headlights are fantastic. I think this zone right here yes. is so well styled. It's, it's BMW. It's, but it's It lovely. just looks like a BMW. Yeah, it looks but, good. But the, the, the connected kid, kidney grill is really starting to look good. I think. It actually, I, I'm starting to really like that. And it's, it like, it's dated all the cars that don't have it. Yes, I agree. In, in an unfortunate way. There's a quarter angle right here. Crouch where I'm crouching and this just looks lovely. Like this section, that looks awesome. It's mean, it's a mean looking car. It's a really mean looking car. And it's I think got the it's, engine to back that up. Yes, it does. And it has carbon fiber wing mirrors. Well, and a carbon fiber Do you roof. have carbon fiber wing mirrors? <laughs> I have cold ears. That's that right, yeah. yeah, the carbon fiber roof is awesome, honestly. Yeah. Although it does feel dark in the cabin as a result. But that's okay. Because Sports you have a carbon car. fiber roof. Carbon yeah. fiber roof. Yeah, no, and it feels sporty. Yeah. Interior? Yes. All right. All right. Turn it on. It says M850i in the gauge cluster. Yes. Which is the only way that you can tell that that is a different gauge cluster than the one that comes in the new 3 Series or the X7 or the X5 or yeah, that, all that does BMWs. Seem, that does seem to be your problem with this interior. I'm having an issue with this one it's issue. It's not that different. Okay, so it is very nice. It's but, great. But this is the same steering wheel of the 3 Series. This is the same infotainment as the 3 Series. This is the same climate control and volume and stuff control on the same gauge cluster. Which so, does not say it's bad, it's just this no, it's, it's is $80,000 later. <laughs> you want to feel like you're in a special place. It's, an, it's different and more upgraded. That said though, this feels really special. It's like a really special place to sit. The cabin's really awesome. It's really, really neat. Like this like leather trim on the door goes up here onto the dash and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. This is all leather trimmed. It's really, really nice. This is solid. The only like cheap feeling part is... The piano black. Mm -hmm. So th this is a weird bit here because some of it's nice. I really like this shifter. Yes. It's like, it's a bit... It's crystal. It's a bit crystal. Like, yeah. Well, these three together, I don't like. The volume knob, the start stop, and the and the they're I drive bit, They're thing. a bit bedazzled. It's a, I feel like I'm in a Swarovski store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a bad way. This is a mirror. Yeah. So when the sun hits it, you know, <laughs> ceiling, yeah, yeah. it's like looking in Medusa. Um, <laughs> the piano black's a bit cheap. I, we, I, we don't like complaining about it, but everyone keeps doing it. The, yeah. the, the formed plastic is, you know, it... It, it does creaks. that. That's pretty bad. Which is a thing. Okay. Okay. No, this that stuff aside. That's the bad stuff. That's the bad stuff. The good stuff is the steering wheel is fantastic. Same one of the three series, but it feels really, really cool. Yeah, it's nice and warm. The stitching, stitching is nice. Yeah. Like, 
I, I just like the vibe of sitting in here is just really, really neat. The seats look so cool. So it looks like an Iron Man outfit. Yeah, like with this. No, it's it's really, really neat. And the, this is an adjustable headrest, right? Yeah. Um, and with the M stuff, you've got like the M, the tricolor stuff. Yeah, there. no, it's going makes to it feel, are, It makes it more special. Yeah, those are in the backseat too, the little M truck. What about the back seats? The back though? seats. Yeah. I thought that was just like a, like a, tor like a medieval torture chamber. That you... <laughs> They're not very usable, we'll no. be honest. Good for storage. Um, I, yeah, storage. I could sit there, but I wouldn't be comfortable for any length of time. Um, this is a, a two-seat car, pretty much. <laughs> now, I think that the rest of this is fine. This has a learning curve, the infotainment does. Yes, I have not got on with Apple CarPlay as well as I wanted to. I didn't to. in the 3 Series either, honestly. Like, it didn't... You had so many issues with it trying yeah, to call maybe, me. Yeah, maybe... I mean, these are early versions of these cars, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe the they... BMW's working out some bugs as they start to sell these on dealer lots and stuff, but, like... Right now, honestly, I can say that Apple CarPlay is not working properly no. in these. And there's a few other like quirks. It's it's fine. This is not as simple as the old iDrive, I will say that. But for me, the driving experience is enough that this interior is fine. Yeah, like the engine and like just how like grand it feels on the road, right? It feels, it feels really special. It feels really neat. Yeah. yeah. So perhaps there are a few things we would change on the M850i, but in actual fact, this is a very cool car. And it's one that we can tell you honestly gives you a special feeling when you are thumping down the highway amidst other more normal cars. It does have some very serious competition in the likes of the Lexus LC500 and the Mercedes S560, but it holds its own. And either way, we are just happy to see the return of the 8 Series badge.